come on to uh, Australopithecus, which is arguably the most famous, most well-known fossil uh, ape, suggested to be a human ancestor, considered even today to be the most likely candidate for a human ancestor. And the most famous uh, Australopithecus is uh, Lucy, codenamed AL2881, Lucy. And here she is. Uh, not very much of her actually and it's even debatable whether she was female or not uh, there's been some discussion about that recently uh, suggesting that maybe it wasn't female after all but we won't, don't want to spoil a good story we'll call her Lucy everyone knows who you're talking about found in 1974 so quite a while ago in Ethiopia but all the evidence actually suggests that it was able to move three different ways so it's actually got a mix of characters it has fingers and feet which suggest it could have been very good at climbing trees just like a modern ape but it also has wrists and fingers which are consistent with knuckle walking, also like the great apes. But its pelvis, the, the hip bones, of which there are about half the hip is here, slightly over half the hip, uh, suggests that it could have walked upright as well. So we have a creature which seems to be able to move in three different ways, uh, moving through trees by brachiation, moving by knuckle walking, and actually being able to stand upright and walk around upright as well. Then recent, more recently than that, uh, in... Uh, 2006, there was a publication of uh, a group of workers, including uh, Fred Spohr, who does all his work with the CT scans on the um, semicircular canals, and he, they discovered a fossil which they're calling the Dakika baby. Uh, and this is believed to be also called Lucy's baby, because it's a baby Australopithecus. A juvenile skeleton, probably about uh, three years old, they reckon. And here's, a, here's the skull and some of the shoulder... Uh, shoulder bones on here and uh, it's, it's, it's a find that is still being investigated they've basically chipped away the rock from the skull and some of the uh, upper part of the, the skeleton and it's still working on the legs and uh, some of the arms but so it's sort of work in progress but one bone they did come across which they had uh, found before in a fossil ape is the, uh, the voice box bone or the, the uh, hyoid bo bo bone which is the only bone in your body which isn't attached to another bone it sits in the front of your windpipe and it forms part of your voice box. You can actually measure various dimensions on the voice box on this bone and plot out some graphs. So what these researchers did when they found this bit of bone, they said, well, let's look at this, let's analyse it, and they're going to compare it with gorilla and chimpanzees and humans. And here you have the humans. So we've got all the blue uh, diamond shapes are humans. You've got a, a, a regression line going through here. And here you have chimpanzees and gorillas and the, the triangle here, yeah, we'll go back. The triangle here is this uh, fossil. So the conclusion is actually it's just like a gorilla or a chimpanzees, and the conclusion from that is they would not be able to speak these creatures. So Australopithecus would have been unable to communicate as a human being would communicate. But interesting to note that it's actually very sits very closely with chimpanzees. It's not a transition between chimpanzees and humans. It sits in there, right up with the apes. Another piece of bone they found was a shoulder blade, which was very useful for looking at where the shoulder was constructed, because you, you might remember the way you work out whether you can brachiate or not is looking at the shoulder as well as your fingers. And they did that, also find finger bones, and the finger bones were curved. Here is, here is, is the shoulder blade of this fossil, and uh, next to it you've got a gorilla and a chimpanzee, and you can basically draw a line through this axis and work out from that what you're most similar to and the fossil Dikika has a line which is pretty much identical to the gorilla there's no, there's no difference between that it's slightly, slightly less sloping if you like but there's pretty much nothing in it and the human is the last one here and uh, this line is actually horizontal so the way our, sh our arm attaches to our shoulder is different from a chimp, different from a gorilla and different from this uh, the Kika baby, this Australopithecine. So the conclusion here is that it was able to swing through the trees much like a gorilla or a chimpanzee. And you can actually plot out various parameters, which is what the researchers did, just to show it much more conclusively. Uh, here they have, here's the data they produced. They analysed human shoulder blades and uh, human uh, a gr gorilla and chimpanzee as well. G is gorilla, P is uh, pan for chimpanzee. And the, this D here is the uh, Dikika shoulder and right in with the gorillas. Human beings are up here. 
So completely different again from the human condition. So this uh, Lucy's baby, as they call it, allows us to make some preliminary conclusions on uh, Australopithecus. It had a gorilla-like shoulder blade. It also had the long curved finger bones. So they were curved like hooks so they could uh, grip the trees, uh, tree branches very efficiently. So it would have been very efficient at brachiation, swinging through the trees like a chimpanzee or gorilla or orangutan. But they've also unearthed the foot and some of the lower limb and from that they suggest that it, was bi it could walk around bipedally, so it could stand up on two legs and walk around. Again, how well it could do that is an open question, and there's no uh, clear way to determine whether it could walk like a human being for long distances or not. But the fact that it is designed also to brachiate suggests that it would have used a mixture of uh, modes of locomotion, just like Lucy would have done. In other words, it can brachiate, it can use knuckle walking, and also move around bipedally if it wished to. And that was uh, 2006, that was published, September 2006, just over a year ago. But this year, uh, in 2007, earlier this year, somebody analysed the, uh, the ramus of Lucy. What's the ramus? The ramus element is actually part of your mandible, your lower jaw, and it's the bit that attaches your lower jaw to the rest of your skull. Here's a picture of the, the mandible of Lucy and another Australopithecus uh, afarensis, which is the same species as Lucy, and the ramus is uh, this bit circled here. And here we have a human uh, jawbone. And as you can see, hope very clearly, the ramus is remarkably different from that of Lucy. What you've got here, where the arrows are pointing, this is the, um, the coronoid process of the ramus. And here in human beings, it's... It, quite narrow at the, t at the end, so it's triangular, but here in Lucy it's more sort of uh, arch shaped, so much wider, so it maintains the same width all the way up, and then you have to look at the notch here, this is called the, um, the notch, the mandibular notch, and in humans it's quite wide and V-shaped, whereas in Lucy and other Australopithecus species it is more narrow and U-shaped. So the conclusion here is, and this morphology, this, the, shaping, the shaping of the um, ramus is very similar to that seen in gorillas. And this is the conclusion I'm quoting from the paper. The presence of the morphology of both Australopithecus robustus, which is another type of uh, southern ape, more, more, more robust, larger, stronger built than the, the afarensis, and its absence in modern humans actually casts doubt on the role of Lucy as a common ancestor. So these researchers are actually saying... And this is a publication for you if you want to go and check it out. It's in the um, publication, uh, so what, the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science of the US of A, published in April 2007 and by these gentlemen. And they concluded that, actually, this suggests that Lucy couldn't have been a common ancestor of human beings. And that's not a creationist saying this. And it just goes to show how, when you're looking at the, the, the debate about human origins and all the fossils that you find, and you get the big splash headline in the paper saying we found the missing link. They're still looking for it. They still call it the missing link. We found the missing link. Here it is. Uh, but then a few years later they do a bit more analysis. They get a few more fossils and they, they refine their techniques and suddenly they say, well, actually, no, we're not convinced anymore. It doesn't seem to be the missing link. So this is actually what's happening to Lucy at the moment, although, of course, the, uh, the jury is still out. But these people have published this research, which looks fairly convincing, suggesting that at least this as far as this feature is concerned, it doesn't appear to be in the lineage of humans. It's more likely to be in the lineage of gorillas. So Lucy, more likely to be the, uh, the ancestor of gorillas. So it's quite amazing how things change as they look at more evidence.